वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी आर अवेयर ऑफ ऑल द ऑपरेशन इन मेट्रिक वी हैव ऑल्सो लर्न हाउ टू डू ट्रांसपोज ऑफ अ मेट्रिक्स वी नो वॉट सिमेट्रिक एंड स्क्यू सिमेट्रिक मेट्रिक आर वी मूव फॉरवर्ड विथ सर्टेन ऑपरेशन एलिमेंट्री ऑपरेशन विच कैन टेक प्लेस इन अ मेट्रिक्स ओके सो वी आर द टॉपिक वी आर डिस्कसिंग टूडे आर एलिमेंट्री ऑपरेशन विच कैन बी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ मेट्रिक्स हाउ operations can be uh, applied on the matrix that is what we are going to learn there are three matrices uh, three uh, operations along the rows which can be applied in the same way three column operations so on whole six elementary operations we can have okay so i have written all those on the board i'll explain you as we go through them first one says the interchange of any two rows or any two columns this you have to be careful about either at the time only one operation will take place either it will be a row operation or it will be a column operation okay so you can interchange two rows now if you want to interchange two rows how that is to be uh, uh, expressed you can see i have taken uh, a general uh, example if i write i with an arrow on both the sides J R J that means R T row and R T J T row they are getting interchanged with each other. For example, if you look at this matrix, this is my first row, this is second row, and this is the third row. And if we apply the operation R two interchanging with R three, that means all the elements of row three will occupy the corresponding position in R two. and all the elements of r2 will occupy the corresponding position in r3 you can see after applying this operation the elements of third row are now the elements of second row and the element of second row are now the elements of third row okay so th this is uh, row transformation in the same way column transformation can also be applied if we use this notation it implies that we are interchanging the ith column and the jth column so this is one type of operation we can apply on elementary operation either row or column which we can apply on the matrices now the second one the multiplication of the element of any row or column by a non zero scalar or a number so we are multiplying the elements of any particular row or any particular column by a non zero number okay so the number should not be zero you can see here if i use the notation ri approaching k times ri that means we are multiplying the elements of our ith row with a non zero scalar k come back to this example suppose this is our matrix and this is our row 1 so in this example if i write row 1 is Two times row two, uh, row one. Okay, if I write row one is two times row one, that means R one is two times R one. If this is the operation we have to apply, then only the elements of row one get multiplied with that scalar two. Okay. So then the third one and the most important and frequently used. This you need to understand very well. It says the addition to the elements. of any row or column the corresponding elements of any other row or column multiplied by a non zero number we'll try to write it as we read it okay see what it says the addition to the element of any row or column let us take a row okay so the addition to the element of any row so to the element of any row we are adding something say the row is ith row so in the ith row to all the elements of this ith row we are adding corresponding elements of any other row multiplied by a non zero number so in the elements of r i we are adding corresponding element of r j which are all multiplied with a scalar k okay so this implies to the elements of ith row k times the corresponding elements of jth row are getting 
added. So these are the three elementary operations uh, which can be applied on the rows and same can be done on the columns. But keep in mind students, at a time uh, when we go through these operations, we will be applying either only row operations or only column operations. Both we will not be applying together. Now, uh, coming to invertible matrices. If you remember, when we were discussing uh, yesterday the properties of uh, matrix multiplication, we talked about commutativity, we talked about associativity, uh, we discussed distributive law, we discussed existence of multiplicative identity. But existence of multiplicative inverse was not discussed. So that is what we will do today. Invertible matrices Before I uh, continue with this explanation, we will go by a very simple explanation related to real numbers. Suppose I give you a number 2 and you are being asked to find its multiplicative inverse. We all can quickly say 2 into 1 by 2 is 1, therefore 1 by 2 is multiplicative inverse of 2. Understood? Whether I write 2 into 1 by 2 or I write 1 by 2 into 2, it comes out to be 1 only. Let us try to apply this on matrices. Now, it is not necessary that every matrix will be invertible. It may be, it may not be. We need to check the condition under which it can be invertible. Let us say A is a square matrix. Fine. And B, another square matrix of same order. Okay. Now, let us try to relate them. Okay. If I say... When A, because I have taken the same order, that means the product AB and the product BA both are possible. Okay, so if I take product AB and it reduces to the multiplicative identity of A. What is the multiplicative identity of each uh, square matrix? It is the identity matrix only. So if you are defining multiplicative inverse, if it exists, then when you take the multiplication of a matrix with its multiplicative inverse, the result has to be multiplicative identity. So I am assuming A and B to be two square matrices of the same order. And suppose if AB is equal to I, which is further equal to BA, then we can say B is inverse of A. And we can denote it as A inverse, this is how we can write, is equal to B. Inverse of A will be B and inverse of B will be A. So, if only if this condition is fulfilled, okay, then we can say that A is invertible. Now, coming to uh, the results related to them. Firstly, inverse, if exists, is unique. It is not possible that one matrix is having two inverses. Every matrix will have exactly one inverse. Then the second condition. Second uh, condition says uh, result. In case A and B are both invertible. If A and B are both invertible. Then... AB inverse, AB whole inverse, that means we are multiplying A and B, then we are taking its inverse, will be same as B inverse into A inverse. This we can verify. Okay. 
Okay, I'll quickly prove this for you. We are saying let A and B are invertible and okay, let this uh, be sufficient. We'll proceed with this part. See, we know that if AB is one matrix, any one matrix and it is multiplied with its inverse, then the result has to be identity matrix. So this is one single matrix. This is inverse of that. So when a matrix is multiplied with its inverse, the result has to be its multiplicative identity that is I. If I multiply both the sides by A inverse, keep the order of multiplication same on both the sides. So right hand side can be written as A inverse into I. We can further arrange these terms A inverse into A then B into AB inverse. Now any matrix when it multiplies with identity matrix of the same order, this is a square matrix obviously. For its inverse to exist, it has to be a square matrix. Then A inverse into I will be A inverse only. And when a matrix and its inverse are getting multiplied, it reduces to I. So here we are left with I into B. AB whole inverse is equal to A inverse. Further, identity matrix into the matrix B will be the matrix B only. So B into AB inverse is equal to A inverse. Now multiplying both the sides by B inverse. As I told you earlier, don't disturb the order of multiplication on both the sides. So you can see B inverse into B reduces to I. I into AB whole inverse is equal to B inverse into A inverse. Now, identity matrix multiplied with any matrix will be that matrix itself. So, AB inverse comes out to be B inverse, A inverse and the result is proved.